Hey, thanks for joining us on Real Estate 101 with Carrie Brown of EXP Realty. And I am here today with Kim Penrod. She is with Fairway Mortgage. Hi, Kim. Hello. So what we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to break down different loans so that whenever you're considering a loan, you know exactly what it is that's going to, that's going to entail. So we're going to start out with FHA. Uh, we're going to look at it from a buyer's perspective and then again from a seller's perspective so that you know, you have education on both sides. Should I take this offer? Or should I take this loan? You know, all those different um, angles. So starting out, everybody always says, oh my goodness, I feel like they asked for my firstborn whenever they're, whenever you're trying to get a loan. So let's start with what goes into that and why you have to have all the information. So when you're buying a house and you want to, first of all, get pre-approved, um, the best thing to do is just to give me a call. You can call me on my phone. I do have a website you can go to and fill out an application, but a lot of times it's just much easier to do it over the phone. I can ask the questions. It's much shorter. Um, there's not as many questions when I ask you other than going to the website. The website's very, uh, it's much more detailed. Um, and then I'll pull your credit and take a look at what you would qualify for let's say we already know you're going to do an FHA loan. Um, what that means is it's a government loan and they are much more forgiving on credit. So you might be young and only have um, one open trade line. Let's say it's a student loan. If that's all you have for credit, then most likely you're going to need to do an FHA loan because you have slim credit which just means you're just not um, old enough to have established years and years of credit, had a credit card, had car loans, all those things that to do a conventional loan, they want you to have many more trade lines open and more time with those trade lines. So with an FHA loan, um, again, the government <clears throat> is trying to encourage home ownership. So they're going to be much more forgiving and allow you to put only three and a half percent down and that's three and a half percent of the sales price and they'll also say okay he's only got he or she only has one credit card or one student loan that's okay we're going to go ahead and do this loan and they're going to <clears throat> back that loan which means they're going to insure it so to speak um also with fha you don't have to have and I always say young borrowers because sometimes I have a borrower that's straight out of high school and they don't have a two-year work history. We can actually use high school as a two-year work history. So um, that's another reason to do FHA. Or let's say you were, um, you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you were a stay-at-home mom all those years. And then all of a sudden you decided to start working and now you want to buy a house. Um, FHA will say, it's okay. You know, we know you haven't worked for this many years because you've been at home with children, raising a family. Um, that's another situation where we would look at FHA. Uh, it's not a bad loan. FHA is a great loan. It used to only be for first time home buyers, but now anybody can do an FHA loan. So if somebody calls me and they say, um, my first home was FHA, I know I can't do that again. Well, that's not true. You can. Anyone can do FHA. You just can't have two FHA loans at the same time. You can only have one. Now, there are circumstances where it is allowed to have a second one, but I won't go into that because that's usually when you're in another state and you're in, say you're in California and had an FHA loan and you're moving to Kansas. Um, but those are all different situations. So just um, across the board, anyone can do an FHA loan. You will have mortgage insurance and mortgage insurance is a premium that you have to pay. It's part of your payment. It's insurance that covers the lender. It does not cover the borrower. And on FHA, you're required to pay that mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. <clears throat> so the only way you would be able to get rid of that on down the road would be to do a refinance and get a conventional loan. And that's when you have equity in the home. You could have 5%, um, 10%, 15, 20, um, any, 
if you started with an FHA loan and let's say in five years you had 10% equity, I would say let's let's look at refinancing and getting you into a conventional loan. Um, you would still have a little bit of mortgage insurance, but you at least wouldn't have mortgage insurance on the full amount for the life of the loan. But let's say you're in an FHA loan and you've been in it for 20 years and you totally forgot that you needed to call somebody to get rid of that PMI and you're going to keep that house. Let's say you're still living in that house. We need to look at doing a refinance to get you into a 10 or a 15 year note and getting rid of that PMI. On a hundred thousand, I'm just going to use that for a price. PMI is going to run you about a um, hundred dollars a month, 90 to a hundred dollars a month. It's just a straight factor. It's the same for everybody. Um, whereas conventional, it's based on credit score and how much you put down. But on FHA, it's 0.85 is the factor. Um, and it's based on, that's with three and a half percent down. Um, Carrie, what are some other things I could talk on FHA? So with FHA, does it not drop off whenever they reach that, that point? No. So, so they, if you had 20% equity, you would still be paying PMI on an FHA loan. Okay, so they yep. do have to refi. So let's, that brings up another um, point. Let's say you said, look, I have 20% I can put down, but the only kind of loan you can do is FHA because of job history or because of slim credit or because you have derogatories. You could have a lower credit score. Say you had a 620 credit score or a 600 credit score, FHA is the only kind of loan you can do. So you would still have to pay PMI even if you were putting 20% down. Okay. And that brings me, oh, I didn't talk about credit score. FHA, <laughs> yeah, FHA, we can do down to a 600 credit score on FHA. If, um, if your score is below 600, you're going to need to wait. And I can still pull credit let me look at your credit. Let's say it's a 595. I might be able to give you some advice to get that raised in three to six months. And then in three to six months, we repull a new credit report and you're at 605, and then we're ready to go. We can do FHA. Um, conventional, it, it starts at about 640 and goes up from there. So if you have a 640 credit score, you could do a conventional loan, but you might have to put 20% down. Okay, so whenever you talk about credit score, they would find that if they want to go out and just look, Experian.com, Equifax.com, yep. TransUnion. TransUnion. Yep. You guys are using the median score, correct? So the middle. Right. Score. We pull from all three of those bureaus: Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. We drop the high and the low score, and we use the middle score. One piece of advice I could tell you on credit reporting: if you go to Credit Karma. It is not accurate. If you look on your credit card bill, like I get a Discover bill every month and it tells me what my credit score is at the top, that is not accurate. The reason those scores from Credit Karma or a credit card company are not accurate is because they are not actually pulling a credit report. Hmm. I am pulling a credit report, which is a hard pull. There is no soft pull. And it is will factor many different things when I pull that credit report. It will, for one thing, it knows I'm a mortgage company. And as a mortgage company, we carry, um, we, weighed, we weight the score heavier because there's more risk with getting a mortgage versus buying a car. So if I pulled your credit today and let's say you went to a car company and they pulled your credit today, the car company is going to show a higher score than my score because we have more risk. A lot of people don't understand that because they'll say, I just bought a car last month and they told me my credit score was 800 and you just pulled it and you told me it was 740. Well, that's because we have more risk. So we are going to weight your credit heavier than that car company. Um, but yes, you can go to Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax. Just take a peek. See if one of those, you don't have to do all three, just go to one of them and just see if your score is at least 600. If it says six, um, let's say it says 640, then 
you're fine. You're good. Most likely when I pull, your other two scores will follow. Usually all three scores are about the same. Um, they're within 20, 20 to 25, maybe 30 points difference. I have seen some that have been 100 points different, and that is because one of the bureaus did not report all of the account. Like there's some credit unions in town um, that don't report to all three bureaus. So if you had a car loan with a credit union, it may not hit all three of your bureaus. And so if that's the only account you had open, then one of your other bureaus may not have a score at all. And in that situation, we would use the two and use the lower of the two. Should they ask that it be reported? On they all? can ask, but I don't know that they will. A lot of times the, the credit unions, um, for whatever reason, they say, no, we only report to Experian and TransUnion or Equifax or one of the others. Um, if that is the case though, we do have ways around that. We can use, like I said, we can use the two scores. Um, and if we needed another trade line, I can do what's called alternative credit, where I would have you call um, a utility company, a cell phone company. We can use homeowners insurance. You would get a credit letter stating that you'd had that account for 12 months and you had made payments on time for 12 months. And then we would use that. It would show up like a trade line on your credit report. So let's say you had um, water through the city of Topeka and the water bill was in your name and you had that water bill for 12 months, we can use that as a credit line. As it's called alternative credit, they just send you a letter and you send the letter to me. Just have to be, you have to make sure that account's in your name though, and that you've made, of course, 12 months of payments on time. Okay, so whenever they're doing a loan, what do you need from them exactly, like taxes and things like that? Yeah, so the, there's um, four or five basic things that we need every single time. 30 days pay stubs, last two years tax returns with all schedules, last two years W-2s and 1099s, and 60 days bank statements. If you call me and I take a loan application from you and everything looks great, I probably won't ask for those items until you're under contract. If I have concerns, if there's some things on your application, like let's say you had six jobs in the last 12 months, I might ask you for some W-2s and pay stubs. Um, otherwise, I send the pre-approval letter to the buyer and their agent, and then they're ready to go find a house. And then once they're under contract, then I send them that list. 30 days pay stubs, last two years tax returns, W-2s, and bank statements. And then we go from there. Okay. So let's talk about requirements as far as a house is concerned. So obviously we've got to go through appraisal. And yep. this is gonna this is gonna help sellers too, because this will help you determine does, would my house go FHA? Do I even need to worry? You know, if you've got a solid buyer, do I need to freak out over an FHA buyer versus conventional? Right. You know, your, the condition of your house says a lot. So obviously there's no peeling paint. What are the other things that an appraisal would look for that would flag to where um, you- On FHA. Can, yeah. So on FHA, because it's government, the government wants to make sure that that house is going to pass health and safety guidelines. So we don't want you to buy a house that has peeling paint. Well, FHA does not want you to buy a house that has peeling paint because- they're worried you might eat the paint or a child might eat the paint and then there's lead paint poisoning. So when there's an FHA buyer, that is one of the things they look for. There cannot be any peeling paint on the trim, on the house, on anything. Even if you've got a building in the back that's a shed that you don't use, that's, you know, you put the lawnmower in it and that's it. Nobody's living in it. They're going to require it on that as well because it's part it's on the property so any peeling paint anywhere um, any steps that do not have a handrail they're worried about somebody falling off so if you've i've had a house before where uh, there was a balcony off the bedroom and they kept the door you know they might have pushed something up front in front of the door so nobody used the door 
but there was no balcony. You could open the door and fall out. They would require that that door have an actual lock on it um, or put a balcony on it so that somebody can't fall out and hurt themselves. Um, foundations are a little bit tricky sometimes. You know, we've got some older homes in Topeka that people are just using for storage in the basement, the basement just for storage because they're not going to finish it for a living room or anything like that. Just so long as the walls are not caving in to the point where it looks like the house is going to crumble. Um, it can be a damp basement. It doesn't have to be, you know, dry. Like if we have flooding rains, there's probably going to be some water down there. We just have to make sure that it's not a constant problem to where the house would cave in. The appraiser would go in there and most likely they're going to say they want a foundation report. Um, if the seller already has a foundation report on in their possession, I would share that so that we can get that to the appraiser to show, hey, look, a year ago they had so-and-so come in and everything looks great. Um, but if there's not enough um, dirt around the foundation to where the water is going back into the foundation instead of away from the foundation, the appraiser might say they need to put dirt around, around the exterior. Um, gutters and downspouts. If you know the water's coming off the, the roof straight into the foundation, then the appraiser is going to say they need to get a foundation report, the foundation guy is probably going to go out there and say, just put some gutters and downspouts on and you'll be fine. I mean, it's pretty, it's a pretty simple fix. Um, it's just has to be done. So paint, banisters, GFCI outlets, anytime you have an outlet next to a water source, so the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink, you have to have the proper outlet. So if there's water, it, it'll trip. Um, that's so a huge that's one. That's extended to the garages too now, hasn't it? Yes, yes. So that's an easy fix too. Wouldn't cost you much just to have those switched out. That's something you could do prior to, and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. If we have any of those requirements, an appraiser has to go back out and reinspect to make sure it's been done, that charge is $125 plus it's time. You know, we might get appraisal requirements a couple of weeks before closing. Here we are, especially this week, it's a holiday. It's really hard to get people out right quickly within two days. And let's say, let's say they wanted to close on Monday. Well, there probably isn't an appraiser that is going to go out on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve or even Sunday. I mean, this this weekend's just that and those things do happen. Um, so if you know you have any of these issues, just get, get it taken care of right away before you list, and then you won't have to worry about it. Then when that FHA buyer comes across, you can accept the, the contract and know that you've done the main things. And then really, truly, those are simple, easy, and that's all there is. There, if you have a house that's missing, um, a oh, hot right. water heater yeah, or, that's yeah. not going to pass on anything right because it, it, you have to live in it right that's not just fha that's conventional that's everything so yeah i think a lot of times sellers do get overly concerned when they see an fha buyer and quite honestly i bet their house is fine it's just those simple things yeah we don't want you to miss out on a on a buyer that's you know more than qualified Oh, and, most definitely. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that buyer. It was just because it could be because one, they were young or, and you know, quite honestly, there are people that are older than me that just don't believe in credit, right? They pay cash for everything and they are restricted to doing an FHA loan because they had no credit. Well, that's an awesome buyer. There's nothing wrong with them. Right. They have no debt. None. Yeah. They paid cash for everything. Yeah, exactly. So definitely don't count them out. Don't freak don't. out. And I know a lot of agents will say, oh, we'll take conventional because it's the path of least resistance. But if your house yeah. is in good enough shape, why, you why know, pass why that up? It? Yeah. Because, you know, they may be grandma and grandpa, but just hasn't had a debt in 20 years. Right. 
and now they don't have a credit score. So right, right. They, Maybe they had their house paid off and, you know, they're using most of that to do something else with. And, but now, and so they've never had anything reporting to credit. And now they want to buy a house and get a mortgage. I, yeah, you, there's just so many different circumstances. Yes. Absolutely. Different buyers, it doesn't mean they're not any good. Right. So if you're an FHA buyer, you know, if you're considering an FHA loan, the downfalls would be PMI. PMI for the life of the loan. That is really, in my mind, the only downfall. Down payments low, three and a half percent. Interest rate, oh my gosh, rates are great on FHA loans. They are the same, if not um, within an eighth of a conventional loan. There really is no difference in rate. Low down payment, it's just the PMI. Okay. So thanks, Kim, for doing this one. We're going to do several. We'll be doing, um, obviously, conventional rural development, um, several different types of loans, VA. So check back. We'll have more for you. Sounds good.